Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, this is episode 3 of 5 on oceans. Today we're going to learn about how we use the oceans, what the oceans have done for you lately, and that is pretty much everything. The ocean holds an incredible amount of resources, and I'm talking about incredible. It's pretty much impossible to describe all of the resources that the oceans bring literally to you right now. But first and foremost is food. The ocean provides food in the form of fish, in form of shellfish, at about 200 billion pounds of food every single year. Historically, fish have played a significant role for humanity. We used to live near the water so that we could pull this food right out of it individually, and it provides large fractions of our food sources throughout human history. Originally, fisheries were these kinds of low-intensity, low-technology fisheries. We would just take fish out of the river nearest where our villages were. And it was a sustainable rate because there wasn't that many humans. But that's taken a turn in the last hundred years with industrial fishing. But we'll get back to that a little later. We also use the ocean for transportation and shipping. We take these giant boats and we throw them across the ocean, right? It takes a lot of energy to move a boat, but it takes more energy to move across the land or through the air. So if you look at every major city that's ever existed before the invention of the vehicle, like the car or semi-trucks, they are all by the water. And even a lot of major cities that were founded later are also near waterways because waterways are the highways of men. This is how we got things around through most of human history, including ourselves and all of our stuff. But today, even still, hundreds of years into moving things by boat, 90% of everything goes by sea. That's insane. There's also energy that we get from the ocean, not just in the terms of like ah, energy. I'm talking like non-renewable energy like hydrocarbons, you know, natural oil and gas that can be found in pockets underneath the ocean seafloor. That gives us energy for running things like cars and planes and boats and heating our homes and all sorts of other stuff. Of course, burning hydrocarbons equals making CO2 and greenhouse gases. That's bad and ultimately harms the ocean. But obviously, we're trying to get away from that. So the ocean can also produce renewable energy. For example, tidal energy. This is where the energy of the tides, which is driven by the tidal locking of the moon pulling the water around our planet, that can be used to generate electricity. According to the National Oceanography Center, large tides around the coast can be used to make energy in two different ways. One is a tidal stream. So you take a turbine, you put it under the water in a narrow channel or in a, like a headland, a seabed somewhere, and then water flowing back and forth as the tides come in and out, turn the turbine, generating electricity. The first one was built in 2008. It was the first tidal stream device, and it was placed in Strangford Law in Northern Ireland. Pretty awesome. But there's also tidal range, which is where you use the height of the tides. You anchor something on the seafloor and then have a connected rope to a float. So as the tides go in and out, the rope goes up and down, and that generates electricity as well. There's also wind energy, of course. You know, we have that on land. The movement of air across the Earth is a huge source of kinetic energy, which turns a turbine and generates electricity. But wind blows even faster over the sea than it does over land. Offshore wind turbines can generate 25% more electricity than their onshore counterparts. So aside from energy and aside from shipping and all of these other things, there's also tourism, you know? That has people all over the world flocking to beaches and onto the oceans for tourist attractions with undersea life, with scuba diving, with whale watching, sailing and cruises, all sorts of things. All of those involve the ocean and that happens every day all over the planet. On top of that, construction uses the ocean to gather up sand and gravel. There's massive amounts of sand and gravel underneath the ocean and Concrete is made of sand and gravel, so we need that to create buildings and sidewalks and all sorts of other industrial applications. And the oceans don't just help us. You know, these were all very human-centric things from shipping and tourism and stuff. But they also help the environment, the atmosphere, the world in general, the climate. A lot of that is run by the oceans. So think about it this way. The oceans are a carbon sink. We produce carbon dioxide and the ocean sucks it up. And it's super important for the health of the Earth. Carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere have increased dramatically in the last 100 plus years. And to stop the CO2 from just getting dumped into the atmosphere, scientists think that we could put a little collector on top of power stations that produce a lot of CO2 or on top of factories. And then that could be piped 
and injected into underground reservoirs and never reach the atmosphere. The ocean would just kind of suck it up. The CO2 can be transported by pipeline to a geological storage site, like an underground reservoir, as I mentioned, and that can be either under the ocean or even on land if it has to be. It's one way that we can use the ocean and use the underground reservoirs to help protect the planet. Of course, it would be better to not produce so much CO2, but hey, you know, people are gonna do what they gotta do. Habitats like marine habitats such as coral reefs support all sorts of different things from biodiversity to, again, tourism. And then we also rely on a lot of corals and a lot of that biodiversity for medicines and different things that we can't necessarily synthesize on our own. On top of that, and I know I've already said quite a few, but this is the crazy part. Water circulation and exchange in the ocean drives pretty much the rest of our lives. You probably never even think about it, and many of you have probably never even heard about it. But water circulation is essential for life in the oceans, and it's also then essential for life on land. Water circulation enables the transport of nutrients and oxygenated water from the top of the ocean to the bottom, as well as around the ocean. So water that comes from the deep ocean, it's called upwelling, tends to be nutrient rich because it picks up minerals from the sea floor, but it's oxygen poor because it's a lot harder to dissolve oxygen under that pressure. It's also very cold. So as that comes up in an upwelling, that pushes other water out of the way into a downwelling. And that's when warmer, oxygen-rich surface water is pressed downward into the deep sea, moving the nutrients from the top down to the bottom and the heat and also life that exists closer to the top where there is sunlight. All of this cycle ends up bringing life and nutrients and heat all over the different parts of the ocean, and it's super awesome, you guys. And without it, a lot of things would go wrong. 250 million years ago, deep circulation in this way slowed almost to a stop. We know this by looking at how the ocean's acid levels change throughout history. We're gonna come back to this, but essentially it's a mass extinction and it's bad. A lot of things died, like 95% of all marine life. There's also nutrient recycling in the ocean. This is the storage and cycling of the life that goes through the upwelling and downwelling. These are microscopic animals that live in the oceans and are eaten by a lot of other things and produce a lot of our oxygen that we breathe here on the surface. Marine microbial nutrient cycling is essential for what they call primary production, essentially phytoplankton and algae plants. Similar to the grasslands of Africa, North America, the rainforests of the tropics, these things produce a lot of resources that other animals can use. Without these energy producers, there'd be nothing for higher order animals in the ocean to feed on. Without the basis for most life on Earth of these sea animals and this oxygen, pretty much all of us would die. So let's hope that's good because yay oxygen, <laughs> breathing, woo, it's always good. Anyway, we can go on and on and on about all of the different benefits of the ocean. Here are a few that we thought were super cool. Why don't you tell us if you have some that you know we didn't list here? You can tell us down in the comments, but also, We've been kind of working with the ocean for a long time. How did they get here? How do we have oceans today? We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Test 2 Plus. So make sure you subscribe and come back for that tomorrow. Also, come find us on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. See you tomorrow on Test 2 Plus.